Pedos, pedos everywhere. And not a single one hanging from a lamppost. Hello, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, in his outies, and in between us, my name's Dan. Welcome back to another Pack Reports, The Bad Bits. And it's only called that until I decide on a name. But don't forget, you can help me by throwing your suggestions in the comments for what to name this separate series from the normal Pack Reports. It's Friday, July 31st, 2020. 52 year old Roderick Keith, a Police Scotland firearms officer, has been found guilty of sexually assaulting a 24 year old. Good Samaritan at Keith's home in Grangemouth, Stirlingshire. Pervert Roderick is said to have kissed the man on the forehead. I don't think that's a euphemism, by the way. Before putting his hands down the man's boxer shorts and then pretending to be asleep. The victim had earlier taken Roderick back to his home after finding him sitting alone and staring into space at a Falkirk sports bar at around 3 a.m. The victim is said to have known Roderick and looked up to him. So, Roderick is said to have drunk at least eight pints of Guinness during a stag do for another constable and the victim said he was concerned for Roderick and so he took him home to his wife who let them both in and then went to bed herself. The victim told the court I must have fallen asleep and I woke up because I felt movement in my groin area. I moved his arm away with my elbow but I thought I must have been dreaming. I questioned it for a few seconds before I fell asleep again. I don't think there's a man alive who would feel movement in their groin area, wake up and then fall asleep again. He said he then woke up laying on his back, being sexually assaulted by Roderick underneath his boxers. Boxers. He said he stood up and looked at Keith and saw one of his eyes open slightly to see what I was doing before shutting it and pretending to be asleep again. He said he felt like a little boy, ashamed and scared, vulnerable and stripped. He had been left severely anxious and, with depression, unable to work. Keith of Grangemouth denied sexually assaulting the man in the alleged incident on December the 9th, 2018. He suggested in evidence that his victim may be attention-seeking and said, as far as I'm concerned, I didn't do this, he's lying. He said, I'm not gay for a start, I'd never ever touch another man, I'm happily married. Yeah. Because it's scientifically proven that being married means you don't like a bit of cock, doesn't it? This has just destroyed me, he said. Defence solicitor Gordon Williams asked the court to entertain a reasonable doubt and find the case against his client not proven. However, Sheriff John Mundy said, I'm unable to do so. Finding Keith guilty, the sheriff said he was unable to believe Keith's story, but he found the victim to have been a credible and reliable witness whose evidence had been clear and straightforward. He said, I believe the complainer. He placed Keith on the sex offenders register and deferred sentence until September the 16th for a background report. Fucking hell. Even I know, if you're going to do that, you're supposed to get them drunk, not be drunk yourself. A former St. Helens mayor, 59-year-old John Bernie, Bien, Bien, I don't know, has been locked up after being found guilty of changing his name so that he could run for election at Wigan Borough Council. Now, you're going to say to yourself, well, that's not a crime. But as per yesterday's report, changing your name when a sex offender, changing your name is when you're a sex offender. Now, you're going to say that's not really a crime. But as per yesterday's report, changing your name when you're a sex offender is a crime. And this scumbag is just that. In June 2017 at Liverpool Crown Court, he was given a suspended 16-month sentence after admitting historic sexual offences against boys aged between 8 and 12. But in March 2019, while still subject to conditions of the sex offenders register, he requested his name on the electoral roll to be changed to John Blondell. He then applied to run for election as an independent councillor in Wigan later that month and signed as John Blondell to confirm he was not disqualified to run despite his sentence banning him from standing as a councillor. However, police were called after council officials learned who he really was. He was handed his original sentence as punishment for his deceit, 16 months, although had he waited a little longer, he could have avoided prison altogether as his suspended sentence would have run out. What a cunt. Charlie Elphick, 
Now, we were following this case before I took time off to do the studio build. He's now been found guilty and convicted of sexual assaults. He was charged with covering three allegations. However, it was revealed during the proceedings that one of his victims actually reported his actions to senior Conservative Party leaders a year before police were ever involved. Which is either the good old boys club looking out for one of their own or the police couldn't be asked with the extra work when there were easier arrests for people's Facebook and Twitter posts. The incidents occurred nine years apart in 2007 and 2016. Elphick's trial heard he had lunged at a woman aged in her 30s at his London home in 2007 on the first night his wife was away after the birth of their son. What a wanker. He forced his victim onto the sofa and groped her breasts while trying to kiss her before chasing her, chanting, I'm a naughty Tory. He tried to kiss me, and not me, by the way, this is what she's saying. He tried to kiss me and I moved his head and pushed me down by my shoulders, she told jurors. He had his knee between my legs and was groping my breast. Elphick told the court he tried to kiss the woman under a misapprehension after she became tactile, but denied sexual assault. In 2016, he twice sexually assaulted a parliamentary worker aged in her 20s, first attempting to kiss the woman and grope her breast. He had his mouth open, continually trying to kiss me, his victim told the court. It was like a disgusting, slobbery mess. In the second assault, several weeks later, he ran his hand up the inside of her thigh towards her fanny. Elphick had told the jury he was besotted with the younger woman and desired a sexual relationship with her. He was suspended by the Conservatives when serious allegations were passed to police in November 2017, but the whip was restored ahead of a confidence vote against the then Prime Minister Theresa May in 2018. He was again suspended after being charged with three counts of sexual assault on 22nd of July 2019. Mrs Elphick succeeded her husband as the MP for Dover in December that same year. The Crown Prosecution Service said Elphick had abused his power and influence over these women to make unwanted and, unforce and forceful sexual advances towards them. Judge Mrs Justice Whipple, what a name, said there is a very real possibility he faces immediate custody. Natalie Dawson of the CPS said Elphick had lied repeatedly and failed to take responsibility for his behaviour and the harm suffered by his victims. The attacks had a profound effect on the, had a profound impact on the women who feared for their careers if they reported him, she said. I hope these convictions today give other victims the confidence to report sexual abuse, no matter how powerful their abuser is, Mrs Dawson added. I wonder what he'll be chanting now. It certainly won't be I'm an naughty Tory. It's more likely going to be that will never fit and stop calling me Claudia. By the way, although his wife did stick by him in court every day, she's now fucked him off too. Staffordshire police pervert 54-year-old PC Lee Tatton is due to appear in Birmingham Magistrates Court on Monday the 3rd of August after being arrested on December the 10th 2019 by the police force's operational safe net team. Tatton has been charged with attempted sexual communications with a child and making indecent images of a child. That's all the information I currently have but he has been suspended from duty while the investigation has been ongoing. As soon as any more information is available I will of course report on that. 79-year-old ex-Lancashire police detective Keith Harrison, who was described as a pillar of the community, has been given six years, not suspended, for being a dirty, filthy, narcissistic pedo bastard. Harrison appeared at Liverpool Crown Court and admitted to six sexual assaults, including repeatedly abusing one girl between the ages of 8 and 11 and another aged under 10. Neil Bissaira, 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 Prosecuting said the retired detective constable had molested the girls after playing games with them. The court was told both girls had struggled to move on with their lives and the younger on antidepressants and experiencing suicidal thoughts. Liverpool Crown Court Louise Judge, uh, Judge Louise Brandon told Harrison he was a mass of contradictions who appeared to see himself as the victim. Detective Constable Ifti Ali from Lancashire Constabulary described the crimes as abhorrent saying he should have shown respect for the law and protected the most vulnerable. Instead, he took advantage of these victims for his own gratification. Sentencing Harrison, Judge Brandon said, he perhaps more than most should have known there is no justification for what you did, but you carried on anyway. 
She said psychiatric and pre-sentencing reports had revealed a mass of contradictions in which Harrison appeared to see himself as the victim. You no doubt saw yourself as a pillar of the community, but behind the scenes you were a predator, she said. Imposing a 10-year sexual harm prevention order, banning him from unsupervised contact with children, she added his claim not to have gained sexual gratification from the behaviour was particularly concerning. Well, he shouldn't be called a pillar of the community, should he? He should be called the foundation of the community. And then fucking buried in the foundations. Now, I always make a fuss about how many images paedophiles get caught with and their lenient sentencing, but I've never quite heard anything like the number of images that this sick cunt has. 50-year-old ex-Labour councillor Roger Spackman, a Labour councillor on Exeter City Council until 2017, worked at a secure children's home at the time. He started collecting an enormous hoard, totalling over one million child porn images, including 12-year-old girls being raped. Spackman was said to have been part of an underground paedophile network, the name of which I'm not going to give out on here, where a police investigation managed to uncover the two frontrunners of the group and charge them with many other members being exposed. When Spackman was arrested, police found 68 devices at his home and examined them all, uncovering what the judge called an astonishing number of images, which included the most serious Category A images and others in Category B and C. Spackman even played the role of an abused child in a paedophile group forum. However, and you knew there was going to be a twist to this, didn't you? Judge Peter Johnson said he was of good character working hard in public service as a councillor in Exeter before his fall from grace, which has been dramatic. Many of the images were inaccessible, but the offences dated back to 2008, seven years after he began working at a secure children's home. The court heard the most graphic images showed young girls aged 12 being raped. Spackman's barrister, Barry White, said he likes to pretend he is a young girl who will be abused. He will pretend to be a young girl. Mr White stressed that none of the images of the people who are of people who he knows. He has never sexually assaulted any children, nor would he do so. That you know of. Prosecutor Thomas Faulkner said some of the worst images were found on two devices found in his bedroom. He said those images depicted prepubescent girls forced to take part in sexual activity. Spackman admitted between October 2007 and July 2017 possessing still and moving images of categories A, B and C, as well as possessing a prohibited image and possessing 48 extreme pornographic images involving an animal. And with all this information on just how depraved this sick fat cunt is, the judge, clearly another sick cunt, only gave, wait for it, 10 months. Suspended for two years. Fuck me. I got eight months suspended for two years for my one and only drugs offence, including 12 weeks on tag and probation. However, there is no mention in the reports I've seen of any sexual harm prevention order or rehabilitation days. So it looks like the dirty bastard pretty much got away with an entire library of child abuse images. Nothing quite like protecting your own, eh, Judge? Allegedly. 44-year-old former Humberside PC Lee Rackham, who was in 2009 jailed for five years and for attempted rape, and who was in 2014 jailed for three years for sexually assaulting four vulnerable women while he was in uniform and working for Humberside Police, is back in court, this time for lying to his new employer about his past convictions. Hang on a minute. An attempted rape means he didn't actually rape her, but he got more time for that than he did for actually sexually assaulting four women whilst in uniform. Makes perfect sense. South East Northumberland Magistrates Court heard that Rackham applied for a job in a vape store in Gateshead, Tyne and Weir in July 2019. However, he failed to declare his previous convictions despite being asked in the interview. Due to his previous convictions, he was also on a sexual harm prevention order which prohibited him working unsupervised with women alone. However, he was able to do just that on several occasions in September 2019. Rackham admitted in court to one count of fraud by false representation and one of breaching a sexual harm protection order and now faces a possible jail sentence. 
When Rackham was released from prison in 2012, he changed his name to Kershaw, meaning that even if checks were done by his new employer, it's likely he would never have been found out. Magistrates committed Rackham to Newcastle Crown Court for sentencing after deeming their powers insufficient to finalise the case, meaning that his sentence should be more than 12 months. But we'll wait to see him. He was released on unconditional bail to next appear at Newcastle Crown Court on August the 26th. Thank you so much to all the supporters of the channel, including and especially the channel Patreon supporters. And that's all I have for you in today's Too Much For YouTube. <laughs> Please like, share, comment and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts as I know many of you will. And until next time, please stay safe, look after each other, film the police and other officials. Good night all. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like the content and you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so. In the description of every video, there are some links to ways that you're able to help support the channel so I can continue putting out content. If you're unable to help us in that way, Hit that subscribe button up the top there if you haven't already become a subscriber that is support enough share the videos comment like it all helps if you're looking for something else to watch up top there is my latest video down the bottom there is a video that youtube recommends for you